Gee, but you're getting polite, Mary. What'll it be? Two beers and make it snappy. Two beers, right away. That's the way to talk, them bozos, when you want service. Yeah, I know. I ought to. I get enough of it in the restaurant all day. Oh, gosh, I've often wanted to have a man hold a chair for me and, and help me off with my coat and drape it over the back of my chair. Say, you're acting kind of goofy. <laughs> I guess I am, a little. Oh, you know what I mean. But that's why I like you, because you're different from the others. Mike, isn't it much nicer here than all that shouting and noise we've just left? Yeah, it's about as cheerful as a morgue. Oh, you're not shut up in a smelly, noisy old restaurant all day or all night. You're out in your truck, riding around, forever seeing the changing panorama of the country and the city. What's that? I've been driving a truck for 10 years. I ain't never seen nothing like what you're talking about. Michael, sometimes I think you're so dumb that you have to take off your shoes to count up to 20. Huh? Forget it. Oh, how do you do, Mr. O'Reilly? <laughs> Why don't you come out with me like this? You know, steady on me. And just as soon as you say the word, we get hooked up. No, Mike. It'd never work out. I'd be a sad disappointment. Don't be silly. You got it all over them with the biscuits. I don't know about that. They're contented. I'm not. I want to get somewhere and, and be somebody. Well, if you want to be somebody, why don't you be Mrs. Michael O'Reilly? No, you don't understand, Mike. <laughs> I'm afraid of things I don't understand myself. Gee, but you're a funny skirt. Do you tip waiters in this joint? Why, certainly, sir. Well, I've been waiting ten minutes. How about it? <laughs> Mud your eye, Mary. Hey, waiter. Yes, sir. What kind of swill is this? Is there something wrong, sir? There hasn't been any other complaints. Yeah, but I'm not one of them guys that's been drinking home brew for the past ten years. Mike. I know beer. Well, shall I take it back and bring you some other kind? No. You drink it. <laughs> What's table here, sir? Nothing doing. I want one of Mary's tables. Hi, sir. Billy, Mike's just come in. Will you wait on him for me? Sure, his tip's as good as any others. Your order, please. What are you doing here? Ain't this Mary's table? No. This table happens to belong to the Lions Restaurant. Oh, smart cracker, huh? Listen, I'm tired of getting a run around here. This is Mary's table, and I'm staying here till she comes. Oh, come on, Mike. Snap out of it. What's your order? Nothing to you. Hey, Mary, come here. What's the idea of always trying to ditch me? I was busy. Oh, busy, huh? What about my date? You made the date, I didn't. I really have to go, Mike. You come back here. What's the trouble, sir? The trouble is that Scoy. She's too high hat for her own good. Well, she rude to you. I'll take his order, Mr. Avery. Mike, what do you want? I want Mary. Beat her. What's the matter with me? Ain't I snooty enough for you? Shh, Mike. Don't shush me. You don't think I'm scared of that mug up there, do you? You don't have to yell at me. My hearing's all right. You'll have to get out of here or I'll put you out. Go on, put me out. Will you please leave quietly? Shut up. Go on, put me out. Hey, lay off me, you
You're the cause of all this commotion. I'm tired of you bringing your personal affairs in here. But, Mr. Avery, I tried to keep away from him. Oh, you did? Well, you're through. Go to the cashier and get your paycheck. That's okay with me. I'm sick and tired of carrying your trays around for you anyhow. Just a minute, young lady. I wouldn't do that if I were you. I would if I were me, but I wouldn't if I were you. It's a funny coincidence, isn't it, uh, choosing the same bridge? Why, were you going to... Weren't you? Not exactly. You see, I, I've just lost my job, and now i just lost my paycheck. I don't know when I'm going to get another. Well, I just lost a fortune, and I don't know when I'm going to get another. <laughs> That's funny, isn't it? <laughs> but you look like a person who has everything one could want. Who had everything would be more correct. Oh, I'm sorry. And now you want to resort to this? Well, you're not going to. I suppose you climbed up on the rail to get a better view, huh? Yes, that's right. Oh. Yeah, I see. Of course, I'm not in a position to dissuade you, mind you. But it does seem to me you're very young for that sort of thing. Listen, I'm going to take you home so you can get yourself straightened out. To your house? No, yours. <laughs> Just a minute, please. It has taken me all day to reach this point. I'm certainly not going to turn back now. Yes, you are. I'd have a good reason, but you haven't. I'm tired of dirty dishes and ugliness and no chance of getting away from it. I used to dream of someday having nice things and being happy. But I know now I was just kidding myself. Things will never be any different from me and, and it just... Just isn't worth it, huh? Is that it? I see. It's funny, isn't it? You've had nothing and I've had about everything and here we are. I suppose the old-fashioned custom of ladies first would apply, or do you think it would be chummier if we went over together? Huh? I think that would be nicer, but wouldn't it be a breach of etiquette without a proper introduction? Oh, I beg your pardon. My name is Alden, Kenneth Alden. Not the Kenneth Alden. Well, how do you do? I'm Mary Beekman. I'm charmed, I assure you, Miss. Not the Greenwich Beekmans. No, just the telephone book Beekmans. Oh, <laughs> well, I, I see. Uh, then uh, shall I, uh, that is, uh, may, may I have the pleasure of the next plunge, Miss Beekman? Just a minute. Has it occurred to you that there might be some other way of... I suppose this is rather crude, it's wet. Do you have a car? Yes, I have a car out there somewhere. Why? Well... I have an idea. So have I. Let's have a drink. Well, here we are. Now, you make yourself comfortable, and I'll go and see if the bottle has left us anything to drink, huh?
There, I found some. See what a useful citizen I am? What's the matter? Did you see a ghost? Did you actually entertain royalty? Oh, you've been taking inventory, huh? But did you? Oh, I suppose so. I'm afraid that I found them more entertaining than they found me. And you wanted to give up all that? Well, not exactly wanted to. Probably will have to. You must have been very famous. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say that. You'll notice that it was always my guests or my horses or my boats they were riding about. They never wrote about me. Once or twice they did. When I went to Africa, they said it was to hunt big game, but it was really to get away from Clarissa. Clarissa? Yes. A girl I was in love with once. Oh, this is a beautiful room. <laughs> I'm going to miss it, too. Looking for something in particular? No. I've just been dying to read books like these. Yeah, some of them nearly killed me when I read them, too. <laughs> so, you haven't completely lost your sense of humor, huh? That's something. Oh, it does seem a shame to lose such a grand home, though. I'm afraid it can't be helped. I think it can. Now, never mind my problem. We'll solve yours. Do you still want to jump off the bridge, or have you got some other plan? I have a confession to make. I didn't want to jump off the bridge. I was only after my paycheck that blew out of my purse. What? Well, I was under the distinct impression you were going to jump off the bridge. For a while there, I thought I was a hero. <laughs> but you were going to, weren't you? Me? No. I was only trying to talk you out of it. I don't want anything to do with water. Which gives me an idea. As the governor of North Carolina said to the governor of South Carolina. <laughs> You know, I've never been in a home like this before. I used to pretend I lived in one and had a husband. Sort of like you. Only young, of course. Young? Well, can I help it if I worry? <laughs> I suppose I pretended so long that I really thought it would happen. Now, sitting here like this, it almost seems as though it had. Drink? No, thanks. What a pity you had to lose all your money. Yes, and it's a pity that I'm somewhat beyond the Prince Charming age and that I have a peculiar aversion to marriage. I've got it. You think I'm pretty? Well, I'd say charming. Thanks. I've always thought so, too. Well, then that makes it unanimous. Huh? <laughs> you see, I've had to be. I don't quite understand. Well, I've tried to be as beautiful and charming as my heroines. Your heroines? Well, who are they? Will you promise not to laugh at me if I tell you? All right. First it was Nell Gwynn, and then it was Helen of Troy, and after that it was Mary Antoinette. And... No Minnie Mouse? <laughs> I don't blame you. My landlady used to think I was cuckoo, too, the time when I bought the old French bed for five dollars. That was when I was Madame Dewberry. Well, you evidently didn't choose your prototypes for their morals. Quite the opposite. I did. You're a most astonishing young lady. You ain't heard nothing yet. <laughs> really? <laughs> How much money have you got left? Oh, I don't know. We'll see. About... Oh, no, I don't mean that kind of money. I mean big money. Oh, big money. You'll have to take that up with my creditors. Well, how about all this? House and furniture, I mean. Mortgaged up to the hilt. Mm, not so good. How about the car? Is that attached? Not yet. Good. Say, we're going places. Oh, which reminds me, I haven't eaten tonight. Would there be anything in the icebox that isn't mortgaged? <laughs> well, I suppose the servants have been eating regularly. <laughs> Shall I see? I'll come, too. Which way is it? This way. And suppose you tell me that brilliant scheme of yours. Hmm, there's lots of goodies here. I knew when I met you tonight that you'd come in handy. Well, that's very kind of you. But I couldn't figure out how till a minute ago. I suppose you know everyone in the social register, don't you? Well, everyone worth knowing. Of course, that eliminates most of them. Where do you want me to put the stuff? On the table, then. Where would your friends be now, the richest ones, I mean? Oh, Newport, Bar Harbor, Narragansett, Santa Barbara, all the watering places. Why? Like the stove, will you?
Why do you want to know about my friends? Because we're going where we can soak the rich. Oh, we are. Well, that's very charming. <laughs> Take your hat off and stay a while. Sure. That's nice of you. I've saved enough to get us started. Oh, you have? Mm -hmm. My dear child, you couldn't possibly have saved enough to pay for one day in a place like, uh, say, the Clifton. Put on a pan with some butter, will you? I said I've enough to get us started. Say, can you cut bread? Yes, I can heat water, too. What are you trying to do, make a cook or a waiter out of me for the benefit of my own friends? Don't be silly. I'm trying to make French toast and recover your fortune at the same time. I see. I'll buy some clothes. The rest is up to you. The rest is up to me? What are you talking about? You're going to, uh, where did you say it was, the Clifton? Well, so am I. There we shall meet very casually, and you'll remember me, having known my father. Your father was not by any chance a promoter, was he? Stop. Now, really, this is serious. You'll know all about me and introduce me to the wealthiest of your friends. And I'll bet you dollars to donuts that I'll marry millions within a month. Of course, you'll get the usual 20%. Well, of all the harebrained schemes. And if you don't marry millions, what then? Let's not even mention that. Oh, let's be sensible now. You don't suppose I could borrow money for such a ridiculous idea, do you? No, I, I don't think you should borrow. I thought of that. But with a sure thing like this, how about selling shares? To your friends, I mean. Shares? Shades of P.T. Barnum. Sure. We'll incorporate, and you sell the stock. In what? In me. Limited liability, of course. Where you're concerned, the liability is absolutely unlimited. The greater the risk, the greater the profit. Say, remember that. That's a good line when you're selling the stock. Again, I ask, what stock? Don't you understand yet? It's purely a business proposition. We need cash for promotion expenses. And there's no reason why the men who are going to have a chance to marry me shouldn't put up the money. No reason at all, except the men themselves. Where are the cups? I don't know. Over there, I guess. We won't tell the prospective victims what they're financing, though. You might say it's, um, a beauty preparation. Oh, now it's a beauty preparation. Yeah, isn't it? I have to be prepared. And a few subscribers that say a thousand dollars each would just about do it. Well, maybe Barnum was right. Is it a go? I should say not. You'd better concentrate on cooking. Oh, and I was so hungry. <laughs> what else can you cook? Yes, she looks all right, Ken. But you're taking an awful chance. I don't think so. Where is she now? She's under the tutelage of a Miss Milgram who will see that her deportment is perfect. Her clothes, of course, will be correct. And luckily, she doesn't smoke or drink, thanks to one of her heroines, Becky Sharp or somebody. <laughs> <laughs> she must be an amusing kid. And undoubtedly, she has a terrible past before her. But I thought you had more sense. Oh, I don't expect it to work, but it is an unusual adventure, and it does give the young lady an opportunity. Oh, stranger things have happened. It seems a devious way of making money. Of course, she'll insist on a settlement of some sort before a wedding. Oh, of course. I don't expect to make any money out of this, you know. <laughs> Look here, Ken. Why don't you marry Clarissa Stanhope and stop all this nonsense? Everyone expected you to. And she is more than even you could spend. Well, if I wouldn't marry Clarissa when I was rich, I certainly shan't ask her to marry me now that I'm broke. <laughs> well, I wish you luck. Oh, Ken! Mary, I thought I told you not to be seen coming in here. We weren't. We slipped in the back way. As the legal advisor and possible bail bondsman, I demand an introduction. Miss Bigman, may I present my attorney, Mr. Newman? If I didn't consider the whole proceeding most dishonorable, I would be inclined to stake you with my own money. What's the matter? I didn't believe there really existed an honest lawyer. Oh, I see now. <laughs> well, now will you be good? <laughs> At least if I can't be good, I'll be more careful with you. <laughs> Isn't this the swankiest outfit? It's charming. But what about your deportment and so forth? And uh, where is Miss Milgram? I thought she was with you. Why, well, I thought she was here. 
Miss Milgram. Oh, there you are, Miss Milgram. Come right in. I'd like you to meet my attorney, Mr. Newman. He knows all about us. I'm sure you have a very apt pupil, Miss Milgram. She's much more a lady than anyone she'll meet in Newport. Phew! What a slam at our aristocracy! Well, don't you call out a slam at me. <laughs> Caught again. I apologize. And before I ruin myself irrevocably, I'm going. Goodbye, Miss Beekman, and good fishing. Goodbye. So you think that Miss Beekman is now ready to take her place in the halls of the mighty? Why, her wardrobe is very complete, and her few groceries have entirely disappeared. But there's only one thing. What's that? Her ignorance of people and places is only natural. So I should suggest a convent background to account for it. Well, she looks innocent enough. Oh, yeah? You wouldn't think so if you heard some of the propositions I got in the restaurant. Miss Beekman, there are certain things a lady does not talk about. Name one. Miss <laughs> <laughs> Milgram, take her away. Make reservations at the Clifton and go down next week. I'll follow later on if my nerves are calm enough. Kenny, dear, if I don't marry a millionaire and repay you a hundredfold, I'll marry you. <laughs> Goodbye. I won't let you down. Well, will you dine at home tonight, sir? Stevens, how do you distinguish between a filial kiss and one of the other kind? I beg your pardon, sir. Do I look old enough to be Miss Beekman's father? Why, certainly, sir. Stevens, you're a fool. Oh, uh, yes, sir. And so am I, and that makes us two of a kind. Bring me a cocktail. Yes, sir. Make it a double one. Good evening to you, Mrs. Nolan. Is Mary in? Why, Mary doesn't live here anymore. Nick's on the gagging. You didn't kick her out because she lost her job, did you? Kick her out, says you. You should have seen the car. Car? What are you talking about? A gentleman in a Rolls Royce called to see Mary. And Mary doesn't live here anymore. Oh. Now you won't be wanting those flowers. No, and I wouldn't be giving them to you. I know you're just dying to get into a bathing suit, Mr. Brennan. Why don't you run along? Well, what are you going to do until dinner? Walk off the effects of lunch. Good. See you later. I say, Jeanette, don't you think it's about time for another cocktail? Why, Tiffy, you've just had an eye-opener. Oh, the better to see you with, my dear. Well, if you can do that well on one, let's have another. Fine. Boy. Mr. Alden will easily see us here, Mary. I wish he'd hurry. I want to mix a little pleasure with business. Don't be impatient, dear. I feel you've aroused tremendous interest. Yes, but don't forget, I'm here to collect the principal and let the interest go. Be careful, Mary. People may hear you. Your waiting is over. Why, this is an unexpected pleasure. Is the Clifton a new favorite of yours? From now on it is. How did you know I was here? Well, the very fact that I'm here proves I didn't. Oh, dear. Do I have to start all over again? How long are you going to stay? Oh, a couple of weeks, maybe longer. Good. That'll give me a little time to work on you. Still broke? Oh, quite the contrary. Affluent. I'm a promoter now. <laughs> Too bad. I thought if I couldn't get you any other way, you might marry me for my money. If I ever need any more money, Clarissa, I'll be sure to let you know. Just a minute now. What is this promotion scheme? Oh, I'm not supposed to talk about that. It's a new beauty idea. There's never been anything just like it. It's going to clean up. 
Put me down for a thousand shares. Oh, I'm sorry, darling. You're about the hundredth person who's asked me to cut them in. It can't be done. Same old stubborn Ken. But I'm glad you're beginning to settle down, dear, and things are breaking for you. <laughs> you're not getting any younger, you know. I wish people would stop referring to my age. I'm beginning to feel positively patriarchal. Well, you'd think I had a long gray beard or needed this cane or something. Oh, well, there's someone I know. Will you excuse me? Oh, no. You're not going to get rid of me that easily. I suspect you're the real reason. Uh, Miss B, present Mr. Cortland. How do you do? Mr. Gardner, Mr. Sutar. Oh, oh, and uh, Pat Bennett. How do you do? How do you do? I hope you'll pardon such a wet... You seem to spend half your time in a bit. Well, how about Tiffy? He tells me that he spends half his time in a lawsuit. <laughs> <laughs> That's the penalty of money. No. Alimony. Hmm. You should feel honored. You and Miss Stanhope are the only girls that Pat has wanted. Probably the only two conservatives. <laughs> conservatives? <laughs> yes, a political term. will stand Pat. Oh. oh. I'm afraid I can't make much of that. You'd better take another dip. I will if you'll join me. Oh, I'd love to. Miss Milgram, do you mind if I go in swimming with Mr. Brennan? Not at all, dear. You think you can find your bathing suit? With the help of the microscope. <laughs> <laughs> you won't go in without me, will you? I'll be waiting on your doorstep. Come on. <laughs> and I'll introduce them. Who is he, Tiffy? Why, uh, why, why I don't know. But he has oodles of money, a nice yacht over in the cove, and uh, good liquor, so who cares? Gotta look like a million dollars this afternoon. I thought you said you had two million. Well, I have, but if I look like a million, it ought to do. I met a little skirt today, there's a knock out. Giving her a party on the yacht. Big pardon, sir. Don't you mean you met a young woman of superlative charm? <laughs> yeah, that's right, thanks. Gotta watch my step with that little girl, huh? She's got class written all over her. A true aristocrat. Huh? A true aristocrat. Yeah. Probably the only one around here outside of Miss Stanhope. The rest of those Janes, and I mean Janes, no different from the models we used to play around with. The Colonel's lady and Judy O'Grady are sisters under the skin. Say, that's good. Did you write that? Oh, no. Kipling. I never heard of him, but I'll make a note of that. It's true. You know, one of those babes told me a story today that, that even made me blush. Yes. The demeanor of the upper classes. Is becoming quite deplorable. Yeah, you said a mouthful. Say, where's my tie clasp? I'm sorry, sir. Seems like sometimes it's just too much for me. I have to do a little job just to keep my hands in. Of course, I would have returned it, sir. Yeah. All right, as long as you practice on me. But not on the other guests in this joint. <laughs> okay, Pat. And another thing. I'm Mr. Brennan to you around this dump. Yes, sir. that you've cut into every dance. If you'd stop dancing with other men, I wouldn't have to. Would you like me to? Oh, well, say. Uh, now you're talking my language. Mm -hmm. What's the hurry? 
Oh, just a little game of hide and go seek. You're not fooling me for a minute. I've been watching. I trust you enjoyed yourself. Probably more than you have. On the contrary, I haven't been bored for an instant. Let's get a breath of fresh air, shall we? Mmm, this air is ever so much better than the saloon. <laughs> Certainly is, isn't it? You know, you seem to be the only girl that doesn't drink. Don't you approve of them drinking? I should say I don't. I don't approve of anything they do. They drink too much, smoke too much, and paint too much. Well, your eyes are as good as mine. The men are just as bad. I'm afraid the Tiffany Cortlands and the Michael Rileys are very much the same. Michael Riley? Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. Like that well-known line. Uh, the Colonel's lady and Judy O'Grady are sisters under the skin. <laughs> you know who wrote that? Mm -hmm. Kipling. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> good, isn't it? Very. You know, I'm sorry I had to find it out at my party. I gave it really for you. You did all this for me? <laughs> That's nothing to what I'd like to do. You know, I hardly saw you all afternoon. You seem to have been very much in demand yourself. <laughs> You know, Mr. Brennan, you've neglected me all evening. What did I tell you? What did you tell him? But he wasn't a very polite host. Well, I'll take care of that right now. <laughs> Come on, then. Excuse me. Beekman are getting on famously, aren't you? You notice things, don't you? When I'm interested. I too can learn things when I'm a lookout man. Lookout man? Oh, oh, I see. You're quite a philosopher. Philosopher? No, not exactly. But my life has often depended upon my snap judgment of other men's characters. How interesting. Tell me, are you a self-made man? I beg your pardon. Well, did you make your own money, if I may ask? Oh, yes, no. You see, it was another man's experiment, but I profited by it. Oh, hello. Have you seen Mary? No. Thanks. Oh. Hello. Is the man in the moon affecting you, or the man on the boat? <laughs> I was thinking of that night on the bridge. Yes, it is rather reminiscent of that. The railing and the water underneath. Well, how's our scheme coming along? I think Tiffany Corbin would be easy to get, but Pat Brennan would be easier to take. I can appreciate that. But we don't know anything about Brennan, or how much he's really worth. While we do know that Cortland is worth ten million. He may have it, but he's certainly not worth it. <laughs> now, Mary, don't be too exacting. The bills will soon be rolling in. Won't the poor little rich fish bite? Well, I won't try until later. As a matter of fact, I did turn down one offer today. Miss Stanhope wanted a thousand shares. Miss Stanhope? Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't you close the deal? I need some change, and so does Miss Milgram. Oh, I simply couldn't take it from Clarissa. I'll work the men. In the meantime, don't be so particular. After all, Tiffy has a yacht quite as nice as this one. Ah, oh, Tiffy, what are you coming down backwards for? I just want to see where I've been. <laughs> oh, there you are. You know, you're elusive as the will of the wisp. And you're as inevitable as the will of the gods. Oh, the wills of the gods wind slowly, is that it? Mmm, and they wind tight. Mm. Does he by any chance mean me? What do you think? Oh, I think you're grand. Mm. Oh, you mustn't try to kiss me, Tiffy. I hardly know you. After all, I only met you this morning. Oh, I've married them much quicker than that. 
<laughs> That'll be just about enough of that. What's the idea? Jealous? No, not at all. You're acting like a sophomore, that's all. Oh, it's the same thing. Then I guess I've as much right here as you have. What's the trouble, Alden? Oh, Tiffy's getting a little out of hand. Come on, Tiffy. I'll open another case of champagne. Good! I'm sorry, Mary. Shall we go below? I think you need a powder puff. You have a little too much lipstick, darling. There, that's better. Ken, dear, thanks for rescuing me. I was afraid you'd be scared to show your hand. Don't worry, I'll keep my eye on you. Hello there. Having a good time? I was just going to get some coffee for Miss Beekman. She's a bit upset. Why don't you invite me to join you? That's a great idea. We'd love to have you. Yes, of course. Well, let's go. <laughs> oh, I've been looking for you, Alden. Well, one of you ladies will excuse us. Just a moment, please. First, Miss Beekman steals you, and now you steal Ken. Oh, well, I can always take the veil. <laughs> <laughs> Come along. We can do without them. I know it's poor form for a host to try to sell a guest something, but how about the reverse? I don't quite follow you. Well, I heard accidentally that you had an excellent proposition. I'd like to get in on it. Well, didn't Clarissa also tell you that I refused? She did. Well, I'll have to do something. I'll tell you what. I'll try and get a block of stock for my friends. But I really can't take more than $1,000 from each. Well, that's better than nothing, but I wish you could make it 10. <laughs> well, there you are, Olden. Oh, hello, Suda. Hello, Gardner. I guess you gentlemen are looking for me, too, huh? In a way. Oh, uh, why, yes. I suppose word is getting around that I have a gold mine in this new beauty preparation. <laughs> Everyone wants to get in on the ground floor. Is that what Pat's doing? Exactly. If you find I can have more, why, you'll let me know, won't you? Well, I'm afraid that would freeze someone else out, old man. Mm -hmm. uh, will you excuse us, Brennan? I want to talk business to Alden. Why, of course. Greed is a terrible thing, Suto. Come on, Alden, what's the dope? Well, we're forming a pool, just a few intimate friends. And are we in that category? Well, naturally, since you put it that way. But I'm afraid I can only let you have a thousand each. That's excellent, Alden. If you need more, please let me know. Uh, is there any risk? Well, the greater the risk, the greater the profit, you know. That's what I like, a gamble. I'll give you my check before I leave. Thanks, a million. I'll send you my check in the morning. This is my lucky day. <laughs> okay, boys, I'll keep you posted. Hello, boys. Oh, hello, Tiffany. Alden, uh, may I see you a moment? Ken, uh, I want to apologize. That's quite all right, Tiffy. Are we still going to be friends? <laughs> Why, certainly. You're not just saying that. Of course not. I'll tell you what I'll do to prove it. We're forming a pool, only a few intimate friends, and I only let them have a thousand each. But you, I let you have two. Well, thanks, Ken. That's darn right of you. Two? Yeah, 2,000, yes. I'll pour, Stuart. Cream? <laughs> Sugar? No, thanks. Wasn't the Kentucky Derby thrilling this year? I'm afraid I wasn't there. I heard it over the radio, though. Oh. <laughs> of course, you've been abroad so much. And Longshaw is so much more attractive than Churchill Downs, don't you think? I've never been abroad. You see, this is my first trip out here. I've been in a convent the past four years. Really? How interesting. Wasn't it fortunate Mr. Alden recognized you? You didn't remember him at all at first, did you? No, I, I think I only met him once before. But he was a close friend of my father's. Oh. And I suppose you regard him uh, in loco parentis? I, I don't understand. Why, 
I thought all you convent girls were wizards at Latin. No, uh, they didn't teach us Latin. Well, that's strange. Oh, I'd like to apologize for staying away so long. Oh, won't you sit down? And you, Mr. Brennan? No, thanks. I was going to take you away. You see, we rigged up another radio on the after deck for dancing. Oh, lovely. I'll tell you all about the convent later. Oh, yes, do. I have a feeling, darling, you're trying to put something over on me. <laughs> Are you going in for cradle snatching? You're just about the age, you know. I wish you'd stop it. My age seems to be a mania with you. I'm not doddering, you know. In fact, I'm just a young fellow right in the prime. Prime to fall for one of these baby faces. You know, Ken, a woman can fool a man, but she has a hard time putting anything over on her own sex. I'll try and remember that. Well, Mary, how do you like it? Oh, this is grand. I could live here forever. Well, maybe you will if things work out right. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Would you like to come for a drive, Ken? I'm going into town. Well, thanks, Clarissa. I'm much too lazy. I believe you, darling. But there are thousands who wouldn't. I quite agree with you, Miss Stanhope. What happens when an irresistible force meets an immovable body? <laughs> you tell him, Miss Beekman. You've been to school since he has. <laughs> so long. Just what does she know? Nothing yet. She suspects a lot. How are the subscriptions coming in? Very well. Tiffy and Gardner and Suda each tipped in a thousand. Oh, by the way, how's Tiffy behaving now? He'd probably propose if I gave him the chance. He's told me all about his past and how he feels a good woman could make a man of him. You know the line. Why not let him propose then? Always remember, he has ten million. Yeah, I know. But he's a halfwit. <laughs> Young lady, you can't have everything. I suppose I'll have to. If Pat doesn't say something. So I think you'd better. We can't keep up this bluff too long. But I know Pat feels the same way I do. You mean you're in love with him? Yes, Ken. And he's in love with me. Only, well, he's so darned over-respectful. Well, let's see. We'll have to find some means of bringing the young man to his knees. Let's see now. It's old stuff, but it might work. Why not let him rescue you? Rescue me? Yes, the old drowning gag. When he holds your lovely, limp form in his arms and realizes how near he came to losing you. Shh, look out. Here he comes. Well, good morning. Aren't you going in swimming? Sure. You better not. Why not? I don't think she should so soon after eating. Bad for cramps, you know. Oh, oh, I'm not going to let a little thing like that stop me. Atta girl. Six lengths of the pool just to keep the old waistline down. I'll base you the first length. All right, you're on. Brr, this is going to be cold. Come on, six lengths. I don't care who wins, just make a race of it. Yeah, oh boy, <laughs> Help! Help! Ow! Mary, darling, it's Tippy. Oh, I never realized how much I loved you. What happened? 
happened to you, Mary? I told you not to go in so soon after eating. Are you okay, Pat? Yes, I'm all right. How about you? I'm all right. I guess Ken was right. I shouldn't have gone in. Although it gave Trippy a chance to show what he can do. Oh, oh I got my drink wet. I guess I'd better go and get a fresh one. <laughs> <laughs> I'd certainly like to know who threw that life preserver. I'm afraid I did. <laughs> and I'm very sorry. Oh, well, that's all right. I think I'll go get me an aspirin. Yeah, get me one, too, will you? It didn't work. Are you hurt, miss? I'll take you to the hospital. Oh, no, you won't. I'm going to take you and drop you off at the psychopathic ward. Huh? Come on, come on. No use to cry over spilt milk. I'll send a tow car for this. Well, what are you waiting for? Get in there and drive me to the Hotel Clifton. Yes, ma'am. on the wrong side of the road. Well, I wasn't thinking, miss. You see, I got a great sorrow in me life. A secret sorrow, eh? Well, you look as though there's something wrong with you. Yeah, me girl, give me the gate. At least she showed some signs of human intelligence. Yeah, she's a smart-looking squirt like you. I beg your pardon. That's all right. Look, that's her. Listen, if you keep your hands on the wheel, you're driving a truck. Yes, ma'am. Is, uh, is that the girl? That's her. That's me, Mary. Say, uh, Mary's name doesn't happen to be Beekman by any chance, does it? Sure. Do you know her? Oh, very well indeed. And I'm going to take you right to your little Mary. So you'd better step on it. I'll say I will. Quick, honey. I have to dress in a hurry. What's all the excitement? I'll tell you while I'm dressing. Did you see Mr. Alden? Yes. He went to look for a quiet spot where he can kick himself without fear of interruption. Nevertheless, one little word from me and I can be Mrs. Tiffany Cortland. Did he propose at last? Uh-huh. Now I can burst into society and have a fortune at my feet. <laughs> Why didn't you accept him? Because I don't want him. I want Pat Brennan. Gee. I'd rather have Pat even if he were a truck driver. Remember, you've got to think of Mr. Alden. I'm not forgetting him. I'm going down now to give Pat another chance. And if he doesn't take the hint, then I'll be Mrs. Tippy Cortland the third. But Pat will take the hint. I hope so, Mary. I wouldn't like to see you marry Mr. Cortland. Thanks, Miss Milgram. I've asked him to give me a little time to think it over. I don't see how Mr. Brenham can help from proposing. You look so sweet in this dress. But if Pat does propose, can I marry him without telling him the truth? You told him. He might think you were a liar and a cheat. Oh, I wish Ken were here. I'll try to find him before I see Pat. Miss Beekman's room, please. Oh, thank you. Oh, hello. I was just coming up to see if you were all right. Yes, I'm all right. I wasn't really in any danger. Gosh, I got an awful scare. When I heard you scream and saw you sink, I realized that I might lose you. Would it have mattered a great deal? Yes, it would. I'm not very good at saying these sort of things, but, well, from the first minute I saw you, I... Well, I hope you don't think I'm talking out of turn saying these things. You haven't said anything. But I think maybe I know what you're trying to say. Let's go outside. Where 
is she? Just control yourself. She's around here someplace. Well, I'll be a son of a gun if it ain't the boss. How are you, Pat? What are you doing here? I used to work for this guy driving one of his beer trucks. And let me give you an airful sister that wasn't a smarter bootlegger in a racket. Bootlegger? Yeah. For crying out loud. Don't you look swell. It's kind of different from slinging hash and lines as restaurant, huh? Say, is this the guy what's paying the bills? Mike, how dare you say such a thing? Wait a minute, Mug. What's the idea of a crack like that? I'll tell you what the idea is. This little hash will lose her job. The next I hear she's leaving a room and house with a high hat and a Rolls Royce. All right, what's the answer? Is that true? Well, yes. That part's true, only... So, that's the kind of a Jane you are, eh? Posing here as a little girl out of a convent. A society debutante. When you're nothing but a cheap little two-tump. Who are you to accuse me of being a four-plush or a double-cross or anything else? Pat Brennan bootlegger. Pretending to be so refined while trying to, shall I say, muscle into society. <laughs> it's kind of funny when you think of each of us falling for the other's line. I'm sorry, Pat. I made a mess of things as usual. You say some guy drove her away in a Rolls Royce? Yeah, and her nothing but a hash slinger. Wait a minute, I don't give a hoop what she is. The idea of that mug, whoever he is, paying her bills here and buying her all them swell clothes. What are you gonna do about it? Driver. Levin! Levin! Give me a lift. I want to get to the station. All right. Get in. Oh, my tiara! My priceless diamond tiara's gone, stolen. Now, don't get upset, Mrs. Smythe. Oh. What do you know about this, Elsie? Uh, nothing. I cleaned Mrs. Smythe's room this morning, but I didn't see it, sir. I wore it last night. Uh, who else has been in your room? No one but this maid. Don't be too sure it was Elsie. I saw Mr. Brennan's man coming out of Mrs. Smythe's room a short time ago. Mr. It's Brennan's man? man? Yes, and he didn't look like he wanted to be seen either. Oh, but you know what goes on. Oh, the insolence. Say, that reminds me. I saw Mr. Brennan's man hurrying away in a taxi with a girl. Oh, it couldn't have been Mr. Brennan's man. This maid was in my room this Get morning. Get me the police department. Why have you arrested Miss Beekman? She was making her getaway with the thief. I just asked Levin to give me a lift to the station. Sure, Miss Beekman must be telling the truth, officer. She couldn't be mixed up in this. Oh, don't be too sure about that. Have you got my tiara? Yes, we found it in the man's grip. But that doesn't clear the girl. Why, Mary, my dear. Oh, Ken. They think I stole Mrs. Smythe's tiara. What? I only asked Levin to give me a lift to the station, and they found the tiara in his grip. Aren't you making yourselves rather ridiculous when you try to implicate Miss Beekman? Well, she was with him when we caught him. That makes her an accessory after the fact. Not necessarily. I've already told them. The young lady is telling the truth. I assure you, she had nothing to do with the uh, <clears throat> transaction. Spoken like a gentleman, Blivin. 
I, too, am willing to vouch for her integrity, if such a thing were necessary. Well, if uh, you say so, Mr. Alden, then there's no charge, why... Of course not. I think we owe Miss Beaton our most humble apology. I'm so sorry, dear. That's all right. Oh, Miss Smythe, please. Now, uh... Idiot. Just because you work for a living, you're not good enough for him, huh? No, it wasn't just that, Ken. He thought from what Mike said that I... that we were... Well, he knew somebody had bought me those clothes and things. Oh, I see. And, of course, he thought the worst. Well, I suppose it would be pretty lame to try to explain. <laughs> it wouldn't sound very convincing. Yet I think I could make him see it if he really cares for you, and if I knew where to find him. I know, Ken. Forgive me for eavesdropping, but just what is the explanation, if you don't mind my asking? I was just introducing Miss Beekman to some likely matrimonial prospects, and... She fell in love with a bootlegger. Yes. I'm sorry, youngster, I messed things up for you. That's all right. I'd have had to tell him anyway. Well, maybe I can help you out. You see, your ex-boyfriend, Mr. O'Reilly, said something about Brennan having a penthouse on top of the Clinton Arms. Good girl, Clarissa. You stay here with Mary, and I'll run right over and have a talk with him, all right? Fine. Now, don't you worry. We'll have some tea, huh? What do you think I want your bail for? If I thought you couldn't tell me anything, I'd let you stay in the jug. But I didn't see anything, Pat. I tell you, Alden had his arm around her like he owned her. And you, staying in the same hotel and couldn't get wise. No. All you could see was a diamond Ferrara. Tiara, sir. Shut up! Hey, flunky. Blevin, you. All right, Blevin. Go in and tell his nips I don't want to grow a beard waiting for him. You better not talk to him today. Mr. Brennan, then? Yes, sir. I'd like to see him, please. I believe the desire is mutual. Please be seated. He's here. Who are you talking about? Alden. What? Now, listen, Pat. Why don't you let me handle this? I'll handle this personally. Oh, that's the trouble. You won't let me keep in practice. Send him in. Yes, sir. But I shall hold myself in readiness if he becomes... Uh, Tough? Obstreperous. Obstreperous. That la dee croquet player, <laughs> if he wasn't such a heel, I'd be ashamed to lay a finger on him. Get him in here. Mr. Alden. Scram. Brennan, I came to see you about Miss Beekman. Oh, yeah? He crossed him with his right and Pat kissed it. He kissed it? Incredible. Boy, you pack a mean wallop. Yes, I've had a lot of experience with wallops. As I was saying, I came here to talk to you about Miss Beekman. Now will you listen? Okay, Alden. Shoot. I'll listen. Let's sit down. I want to straighten you out about Miss Beekman, Brennan. You're laboring under a very false impression. You know, it seems funny, but I used to be afraid of you. Oh, and I disliked you terribly at first. Of course, I was only jealous. I don't know why Ken won't marry you. You're really awfully nice. Oh, I know I am. But I can't seem to make him think so. There he is. I hope your luck's better than mine. Oh, there you are. How does it feel to be playing Santa Claus? I wish you'd stop comparing me with elderly gentlemen. All right. Boy Scout, then. Doing your day's good deed. Is that better? Much better. Clarissa, it's in the air. 
Since I'm a Boy Scout, I may as well do another good deed and marry you. Ken, do you mean it? <laughs> well, of course I mean it. What? <laughs> What's the matter? Well, it's such a shock. <laughs> 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 Come in. Thanks. Did you send for us? Yes, it's about that money you invested with me under false pretenses. False pretenses? Yes, I'm no longer interested in any beauty preparation. Why, Ken, were you lying to me? No, darling, I was very interested. As a matter of fact, you helped put it on the market. Well, what's the name of it? Uh, Mary Beekman. Mary Beekman? Yeah, she's the beauty. And all of you aided in her preparation. Oh. Well, uh, for what? For me. Gentlemen, I bought you out. You see, I couldn't have any other stockholders in Mary Beekman Limited. So I'm returning your money with interest. Well, then we financed it ourselves. Just a bunch of suckers. Just think of all the nice wedding presents they'll buy. For whom? For us. What about our dividends? Yeah. Right here. That was certainly money well invested. May I expect the same dividend quarterly or semi-annually? You have a surprise coming. The corporation has been dissolved. I also have a surprise for you. Mr. Alden has just consented to marry me. Of course you realize I'm marrying you for your money. That's what you think, darling. Pat, is that what you think? That I... I've never sized up a character wrong yet. You did too. You thought I was a real lady. I still do.